My name is Pat Varch and I'm the village historian. I'm also um, the curator of the very small Hoffman Estates Museum, which is within this building. The cases that you see outside of this room, um, those are our display cases. Um, take a minute to look at those. Those are really neat too. It's kind of a then and now. I'm also uh, a member of the Schomburg Township Historical Society. And so I, you can tell I love history, especially the history of our village. Um, this is a wonderful place. I moved here in 1965 and my children, I have four children. I was expecting my, my fourth one in two weeks. So it was, it was really, um, it was very strategically planned. The boxes were marked and I knew which rooms they were gonna go in. But I've lived here all that time and I think that's what qualified me to be historian. Um, I do have a good time with it. Um, if you are a fan of the historian notebook column, I write that in the Citizen every month. I've been doing that now since 2007. And I'm running out of ideas, so please, my email's at the bottom. Send me a few hints on what you might want me to write about. And this may give me some ideas too, with the questions that you ask. So let's begin. I put together my PowerPoint program, and I have a fun little tool here. It's a laser pointer, and it also will advance my slides. So let's, let's go forward with this. So this is, you know, this is interesting. This is part of a plat book uh, for Cook County. And this is Schomburg Township. And this came from a plat book from 1954. So you can, you can see here, you know, this, this X marks the spot that's always easy on maps to find where Hoffman Estates is. But these show the names of all of the farmers. Um, sometimes the farm was owned by one person, but it may have been rented to someone else. But it's just interesting, you can see. And then there's little arrows that will point to another piece of property. And so you know how much the farmer had in land. Um, but they're very interesting and you see families that are related. And when they did come, they tried to come with their families. Uh, they found it, it was so beautiful here. Uh, the first settlers that came, came to um, right here over by um, the Grieve Cemetery and where the Hoffman, or I should say the Marshall Fields Hunt Club used to be, right along Huntington Boulevard. Um, that's where they settled in. And then the Sunderlidge Farm. Johan was, was one of the first people to settle here. And so it was, um, it was a big change when FNS moved here. Um, the farm was, farm work was ending and you can see the couple pictures that, couple pictures that I have. Um, the horse-drawn uh, buggy there is from the Sunderlidge Farm. Um, the people out in the fields, those were people working on the Bergman Farm, which was out on Ela and Algonquin. Guess what? This is the first map of Hoffman Estates. Can you believe it? You know, I'll have to tell you this. I, I sing at the choir at St. Hubert's, and there's a lady there who had someone come and visit her, and she lives out in that newer area out off of Shoe Factory Road, way out there butting up against Elgin. And um, as she was driving with her friend, her friend met her at St. Hubert's, and then they went out to her new house. She says, are we in Iowa yet? <laughs> I thought that was, that was great. You can see the parcels, and you know to this day we still call them parcel A, parcel B, parcel C, parcel D. Uh, we have the pie area and so on, as, as uh, FNS built the early Hoffman Estates. You can see, see where, where Bodie Road comes into Roselle Road there? Very close to Higgins. Bodie Road was known as the, um, Bodie Road was known as the Chicago to Elgin Road. So is Gulf Road. But Bodie Road also had that name, and I thought, how could they get to Chicago from Elgin on Bodie Road, which is one of the oldest roads. It was built in the 1840s. So when you travel along it, know that you're on a very historic old road. This shows how many houses were built in each section. 
Um, we have, what is it, 250 in parcel A, 300, I can't read it from the side very well, but you guys can see it pretty well, can't you? Yeah. So, can you? <laughs> Come up to the screen closer. So this was, uh, this was the very first map. I mean, this was on, um, we had two posters in the village advertising our program, and we had this overlaid uh, on top of one of the maps that we have now, which you'll find up here on the, the table. So the development began, and uh, parcel A, you can see in that uh, top one, people had to go out there to the road. Those were all the mailboxes lined up for their mail. Uh, because they didn't have any other way of uh, having mail delivered. The roads were just all muddy. And so this is the beginning of, of our village. Here are these pictures that we have. Um, the crossroads picture is my favorite. Once upon a time in this area here, um, there was a jewel. I mean, sorry, there was an A&P. And it faced onto Higgins. This is Higgins here. And then... Uh, this is where I live now. This is in the Highlands. And then the, the Vogelei farmhouse would be over here. But there were no curbs. There were just four-way stop. That's all that it was. And so when we started to develop this area, there was a problem. It was these checkerboard boundaries. Um, with each new annexation, um, we were in court all the time. We continued to battle with Schomburg over who was entitled to the land. Uh, we won some and we lost some, and uh, the checkerboard was growing. What Schomburg saw was a real problem for them. It was a very rural community. Um, they knew what was going to happen, and so they decided to incorporate. They did that in 1956, so that gave them the, uh, uh, the opportunity to annex land. And so they annexed Higgins Road and Gulf Road and all the land that they could up and down. Uh, we had the east side of Roselle and the west side also. Gulf Rose Shopping Center was opened in 1963. This is a picture of the grand opening of the Jewel. There was no place to shop except this Hoffman Plaza, and uh, everyone was so happy to see the Jewel opening up. Here you can see this sign. This was 1965. Uh, do you recognize that building behind there? The bowling alley, yes. And of course, that's a question that I want to know. What's going to be there? Um, we could ask, well, we could ask that question. There may not be any answers yet. But um, the bowling alley is, was really very important to the community. When they built our, our town, they also built the movie theater and um, the shopping, but the, also the bowling alley. Um, the plan for FNS construction was to build a community. But it was really hard because one side of the street was Schomburg and the other side of the street was Hoffman. And I'll bet, I'm going to ask you, we're going we're to see, who knows. This was the beginning of this checkerboard downtown area. The north side of Gulf Road is Schomburg, except for the highlands. Schomburg has everything going west up to Strawberry Plaza and White Castle. Confusion over where you are is never ending. All right, I'm going to ask. Um, I'm going to ask you a question. If you're if you're over here, are you in Schomburg or Hoffman? That would be the northwest corner of Higgins and Roselle Road. Yes, you're in Schomburg. That's not ours. There's a, there's, there's a shopping center uh, in here. Is that Schomburg or is that a new Hoffman Estates one? That's Schomburg. If you're over here on the northeast corner of Roselle and Gulf, are you in Hoffman or Schomburg? You're in Schomburg. <laughs> so you see what they did. And, and I just, I saw the police at our 60th anniversary 
um, celebration out at the Sears Center. And um, they told me that if there was an accident on Higgins Road, right in front of their beautiful uh, police department, they didn't have to go to it. It was Schomburg's job. And so the, the, the Schomburg police would be called if there was an accident of some kind. If they needed assistance, of course, we would probably help. But um, that's not ours. So when I moved here, it was really hard for me. So we headed, we headed west and north, never looking back. Hoffman Estates continued to go to court to settle disputes with South Barrington over the annexation of land north of the tollway. It was a back and forth fight to keep what we had already begun when we annexed the bridge going over the tollway, Barrington Road. And so here we had more fights. After the first five years with Schomburg, uh, things kind of settled down. I guess they had what they wanted. Um, they did want to stop the growth of Hoffman Estates, uh, but they did learn that that was illegal to do. And so we did escape. You know, we went out west, we went up north. But you see, we had, we had more trouble. I mean, the courts probably said, Guess who's here again? <laughs> Jumping across the tollway. Now this was, again, this was another one of those, um, you know, an opportunity for some of these other villages. They didn't want us to go across. We had already, for a small area by the bridge that went over Barrington Road, I mean at Barrington Road. So annexation in 1961, Courts say no in 1963. Annexing Barrington Road and the bridge, along with 1,700 acres for future development north of the tollway, was um, okay in 1961. But South Barrington, Barrington Hills, and Inverness took us to court opposing annexation of land across a tollway. It couldn't be done, they said. And this was a problem uh, for this development. Um, this is uh, Howie in the Hills. And so how did we, how did we get all of the, the forest preserve that we have there? Um, what was this Howie in the Hills? Well, the Howie in the Hills plan development, um, they believe that 1,700 acres were annexed to Hoffman Estates. They were in the process of building homes, putting in sewers and connecting to water for their homes. But South Barrington, Barrington Hills, and Inverness won the battle when on July 23, 1963, the circuit court ruled that the annexation was not legal. No longer in Hoffman Estates, their project began to fall apart. So they thought they were in Hoffman Estates, and so one of the biggest problems for them, um, they were following the regulations for our village. The village uh, has certain regulations that must be followed by the developer as far as, you know, what, the, the, the land, how many houses you can build on X amount of land, and, and so on, and so forth. Well now, all of a sudden, Howie in the Hills learns they're not in Hoffman Estates anymore. How can that be? Well, we took our battle to the Illinois Supreme Court. And on January 22nd, 1964, they ruled in our favor. Howie and the Hills abandoned its plans and soon other developers moved in to continue the growth up north. And it took, I talked with um, one of our previous mayors, Mayor Virginia Hader, and she said that the Howie and the Hills project was really, um, you know, they, they tried everything to be able to build their homes. Uh, when they thought they were no longer in Hoffman, I mean, they, they were told that they weren't in Hoffman, um, they tried to comply with the rules now for building homes in Cook County. And some were okay, but others weren't. And then they thought, well, they couldn't connect up to Hoffman Estates water uh, they were trying to hook up their water out west. And the Metropolitan Sanitary District said, 
no, you can't do that. So then Howie and the Hills thought, well, what are we going to do? Uh, we'll build our own um, sanitary system. And again, they were opposed. Uh, Inverness said, you can't dump all that stuff into the, the, the creek there. They tried to run piping down Algonquin Road, and they got so far, and then all of a sudden, there was no more money. There were just too many battles they were trying to fight. And then the bank that they were, that was um, financing them collapsed. So it was the end of Howie and the Hills. And Mayor Hader said, 10 years to unravel everything and to um, try to open up the land to other developers. And you can see there up north, um, there is a jewel on Palatine Road, um, Winston Knowles. Winston Knowles was then developed on, on this land. You see this, this, this sign here. I drove out to take this picture and nowhere was there any name for this plaza. I didn't know what it was. Jewel was there and all of these other stores and then the, 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 the housing development, Evergreen. And so there's three books in the back that I was able to get as a, um, uh, was Mark, Mark Kaplan, I believe. They're books that show the shopping centers. And they're very interesting to look at. They go back over the years. You might want to flip through them. But I saw where this shopping center was and discovered it was called the Rose, the Rose Shopping Center. No sign anywhere. I went in this, the coffee shop there and said, did they know what the shopping center was called? And they said, no. So it would be good if they had a sign that said Rose Plaza or whatever they want to call it. So moving, moving west, uh, here you see the development then that, that continued here in our area, not across the tollway. And so uh, we've got pictures of um, Barrington Lakes and Moon Lake. Again, these were aerial shots. The tollway, of course, is there. Tollway's been here with us through most of our development. I think it started, it opened, at, was it in 57? 56, 57. This is Robert Hall in Barrington Square. And so, you know, we developed the Barrington Square area. Um, this picture is from 1971. The Dominic's, Dominic's was, was here. And then this was Robert Hall Village. And then the flip side was, was like, like right over here. Garibaldi's Pizza was here, and then flip side. And it was really very, very popular. Flipside was a, a popular place because you could go there and you could get your tickets to concerts and so on and so forth. Uh, we went to court about that too. And we won that battle. And that was about the drug paraphernalia that they were selling over there. And I'm not sure what they called it. They didn't call it drug paraphernalia, but they, they had that there and they were selling it. And uh, we went to court and we won, and that set up uh, precedence for so many other places that were trying to se sell drug paraphernalia. So that was a that was a good victory for us and for many other communities all all throughout um, the area. But Barrington Square has grown so much. Um, there was a movie theater there at one time. Does anyone remember when Robert Hall moved out? Who moved in? Yes, Kmart. Kmart was there. And after Kmart left, who moved in? Menards. Oh, and I miss them. I would love to see Menards back here. I enjoy shopping at Menards. It's a very good store. But yes, Menards moved out. And um, now we just have a beautiful lawn for the geese. You know, if you're over that way. And I know that the village, I'm sure, is trying to find someone that will, that will move in there. So what's this other project? We learned about the Howie in the Hills and how that went, you know, that went uh, belly up. And we wound up with a lot of property that was later on developed. But now, Leisure Village. It was called Leisure World, but then the name Leisure Village was also used. 
3,700 acres. Uh, this was a Rossmore development, and it was advertised to be a self-contained senior village with up to 50,000 residents. I still can't believe that. With their financial failure, the property was fought over by the Metropolitan Sanitary District and the Cook County Forest Preserves. What a difference this made, this leisure village. The village had gone ahead and said, yes, you know, going to be a good project. Let's go ahead with this. And uh, they, they opened up a little uh, trailer in the Hoffman Plaza. And one of our friends, who's a longtime resident, Jane Davey, worked there. And so she was trying to sell these, uh, these home sites and condo sites to the people. And they had other things in the works around uh, the United States. This was not their only project. So um, there, were, there were other areas that, that were taking up their, their funds. And so eventually, this too went belly up. There wasn't enough money to go ahead with it. They did ha set up a little office. There was a little office out there. If you go down Gulf Road and you're, you're out there by the forest preserves, it's now a forest preserve, uh, like a, an, their office or a little headquarters there. At, for a time, in the early years, that was a newspaper distribution uh, building. But now the forest preserve has it. That, that was a little area where they were going to start working on their, their leisure village but it really never did happen. And so this is an article, and I thought it was, it was interesting to put it here in my PowerPoint. Um, Hoffman, and I'm gonna, I'll read it to you. It says at the top, in the debate for the Rossmore Corporation property, the village of Hoffman Estates would like the property used for, one, a 300-acre shopping center, two, an 800-acre industrial park, and three, 500 acres of apartments. The remaining land, uh, about 2,100 acres, would be divided between the Metropolitan Sanitary District and the Cook County Forest Preserve. So Hoffman Estates officials, it says in the article, are attempting to save their plans for a, is that 1,800 acre commercial and residential development of the Rossmore Corporation. Um, the sanitary district and the uh, forest preserve were both looking, looking to get this land. Uh, sanitary district trustees are willing to meet with the county officials and us on this problem, Mayor Roy Jenkins, village president, said. We have not heard from the uh, county board, so we are sending a second request to Richard Ogilvie, county board president, to consider our plans in the feud. Village shows concern. The village is concerned over how the 3,700 acres will be used. And if it can continue with its plans for industrial and residential development in that same area, Jenkins said. Forest Preserve officials announced in June their intentions to purchase the land bounded by Interstate Highway 90, Barrington, Bodie, and Sutton Roads, and owned by the Rossmore Corporation of California. And so, to make a long story short, we wanted that land. Um, it was part of the plans. And so, um, Metropolitan Sanitary District said, well, we're gonna put a, um, a treatment plan out there. We've got so much development, we need to have that. That's gonna be necessary. And the Forest Preserve uh, swooped in and said, no, uh, we need to have some open land for all the people that are moving and the developing area of Hoffman Estates, uh, we would like that land. And so, we know who won. It was the forest preserves. I guess I'm glad there's no treatment plant out there. Um, Village of Hoffman Estates wasn't very happy. That was a lot of beautiful land that, that really would have been perfect for their, their plans of commercial development and residential. It was a big piece of land. And so this is why, when that lady wanted to know, are we in Iowa yet? That's why we are so far out west. Because now, if we wanted to, to continue our growth and development, we would have to go beyond 
this piece of property. It belonged to the Forest Preserve, and so now we'd have to go out further, further west. And that's what we did. And so then land was annexed further west, and we had um, so many beautiful areas out that way. In fact, I'm going to ask, ask you a question. I'll change my slide. Yes, the Forest Preserve won, and the land was condemned. Farms fell under the bulldozer among tears and sadness. And I've, I've heard several stories of the people who owned some of those beautiful farms. No deal could be struck with the Cook County Forest Preserve District. The village of Hoffman Estates asked that 500 of those 3,700 acres could be left for commercial development, but the only thing that was said was no. They said no. There were not happy people around at that time. So you see the Forest Preserve sign there. I went out to the Forest Preserve area and was almost arrested, but um, I was walking along the side of the road and the police were there. They had pulled someone over to give them a ticket. And I don't know what they thought I was doing, but I was just going to try to get a good place to take a picture because there's no place where you can pull off on the roads. It's very hard. But I got that picture. I told them who I was. And so Cook County demolishes the Bergman Barn in 1971. This was the beginning of, of the demolition of all of the farms out in that area. Uh, as well as, you know, they also got the forest preserve land uh, north of the tollway. This was really sad. Uh, the Bergman family, um, I had gotten these pictures from them. This was the barn in earlier years before it was torn down. It was on Algonquin and Ela Road. The house is gone now too, sadly. So some of the developments that were, you know, the beautiful homes that we've built out west and up north. Here's Castleford, Hearthstone. Uh, Bergman Point, uh, that land was sold. That's, that's another beautiful area. Uh, here's the Forest Preserve sign. These are the Highland Woods Golf Course. I don't golf, but I hear it's supposed to be a very good golf course. And did you know that there's a a flying field in our, in our town? Did you know that airplanes land there every day? Unless the weather's bad. How many of you knew we had a, a, a model airplane flying field? Oh, good. And if you go out there on a Wednesday, um, I stopped and I talked to those people. I got a picture of one of the planes. They said on Wednesday um, in the evening, you can go out there and they will show you how to fly one of their planes. And it's great with children because they will actually show your child or your grandchild how to fly one of those planes. I think that would be fun. I think I'm going to try to go out there before the snow flies on a Wednesday evening and see if I can fly one of those planes. They just look like, the men look like they're having such fun. Did you know there's a railroad in town? Did you know there's a railroad in town? How many of you know that? Oh, there's a lot of people here that don't know we have a railroad in town. Well, in the process of growing, you know, we inherited a lot of things. We took a lot of things into our village, and one of them is the railroad. It's the Canadian, isn't it? It's a Canadian. God, I should have the, the full name here for you. But it's out west. It's the Canadian National Rail Railroad. And so they're out. Um, I know there's a crossing there at Shoe Factory Road where I was stopped by a train. It was quite long. It was in the middle of the day, so I guess they weren't stopping, you know, people going off to work. But yes, the railroad is, is out there, um, and we've got a flying field. The Charles Lindbergh School was inherited with our move to the west. Um, this was interesting when we discovered a, a little bit more about this. Um, there are only two like this. The other one is in Batavia. And this was, not, um, this was not considered very popular by the people who had moved out there in, in Haverford Place. And it was constantly being vandalized. And um, people said people were going in there drinking and doing drugs and all kinds of things. Um, 
we would have liked to have saved it, but again, sadly, this was another um, part of the, the past that um, was torn down. Here I am, uh, sadly, putting a, a sign up. That's a picture of uh, Ann Fox, who had taught in that school. And here, AT&T, it's going to be a new world for Hoffman Estates. It's gonna be, it's gonna be called the Bell Works. And I just, I think it's gonna be wonderful. It's gonna be a whole new world. All that property over there will be uh, developed into uh, many things. So you'll have to keep, keep yourself uh, abreast of what's going on. You know, you can listen to the uh, board meetings are on channel six. So tune in and you can always hear what's, what's going on. Of course, Sears was one of the greatest accomplishments in growing to greatness. It's a beautiful campus. This was the Poplar Creek Music Theater, loved and missed by all. And the Barrington Road Interchange and Transportation Hub. All these things that we've, we've just grown and grown and develop things that are just wonderful for all of us that live here. So what's in our future? Can we grow further? Perhaps the story of our boundaries will change once more. And I'm going to ask the mayor. Mayor, is there any big projects that we can still have or that we can annex into, the, into our area, into the village? There are some unincorporated, a uh, few houses around the periphery between us and Elgin, for example. Um, there are some larger areas that uh, could potentially, we have a, a boundary agreement with South Barrington that runs until the, uh, I believe, 2023. And we sort of divvy things up, you know, the old spears of influence from history. Mm -hmm. And uh, once that boundary agreement uh, would uh, end, those could be opened up, but there's nothing in the, in the next few years, I guess, it would say next two or three years probably that would be of any major, major land mass. We could annex Elgin. <laughs> I think Elgin would very much object to that. I, uh, <laughs> I think so too. Yeah, we oh. seem to have a lot of neighbors who object to our, to our even existing. Thank you, thank you, well, Mayor. It, it's, really, it's really remarkable. Um, and these two main uh, projects that failed really made a big difference because you know now you can see why we had to go further north to an ex land because all of that land there was uh, forest preserve land, and then the same thing with us going west. We had to an ex land beyond that forest preserve land in order to continue to grow. So it's it's a wonderful village, and I certainly love to be a historian. Are there some questions? Can you go up to the mic and ask your question, please? Yeah, I've been out here since about 71, and I've noticed uh, Hoffman Estates kept going west and north. Is it a larger area now than Schomburg? You know, that's a good question. I, I think in square miles it may be, but I can't really be, you know, can't can't really give you a good honest answer. Population wise, they have they have a lot more people. Um, we we have so much open land. You know, we probably would have had that huge population, but since we have the open land, um, our population is approximately now I think uh, fifty three thousand people. We're going to have a census coming up, but um, open land. You know, I would think we would be bigger. I'm going to find out. I will definitely find out. We go way out west. And, you know, if you, if you would like to actually take a, a tour around the village, I would suggest taking a ride down Shoe Factory Road. It's beautiful land. The forest preserves. There's peri uh, places there where you can picnic. Um, you can, you can uh, also take a ride down Bodie Road. That's another... Uh, interesting road to drive down because you're in the forest preserves and you see things that you, you normally wouldn't. 
you know, we get we get stuck on the going on the tollway. We go on Gulf Road, Higgins Road, around on the main routes. But um, take a tour. Head up north. Beautiful homes up north and out west. A far cry from the little homes in Parcel A that Jack Hoffman built. Um, he could build up to four houses a day. And so I think he would be amazed, you know, at the size of our village and how we've grown. Any other questions? Yes. I don't know if this even applies, but... Uh, Step a clo little closer to the mic. Okay, there was a, a lion bridge over by yes. Barrington Road and, and Golf. Oh. Was that part of Hoffman? This is, this is another... Th I love that bridge. And before I die, I hope to get it on the National Register. It's a very hard process, and usually you pay to have somebody do that work, and I thought, oh, I could do this myself. Mm -hmm. And I did do a lot of it, but that Lion Bridge we inherited, just like we inherited that Lindbergh School. As, we, um, as the Forest Preserve took over all of that land, that was our land, you know, it was annexed to our village, so that bridge belongs to there's three groups, Barrington Township, the Forest Preserves, and the Village of Hoffman Estates. I'm sorry, oh, wrong, I'm sorry, wrong town. Thank you, Ray. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's Hanover Township, and it's the Forest Preserve, and it's Hoffman Estates. And Hanover Township was able to um, uh, put a nice plaque over there. So we're trying to find out um, if we can get it on the National Register. It's starting to crumble a little. Yeah. It's a beautiful old bridge built in 1906 by um, Harry L. Emerson. He built all of the bridges in Cook County that go over the, the Des Plaines River. He built a beautiful bridge out in Lyle, which is no longer there. So, all right, thank you. Okay, well, just another quick question. If, yes. I'm, I'm not sure does it belong to Hoffman, or does it split up between these? It other belongs entities? to all of us. Oh. Yeah, we have we have we have authority over that you know that land. Um, before they put up the sign, uh, Hanover Township, the Forest Preserve, and the village all agreed to that. There's a historic sign that was put there okay, by so Hanover Township. So, so there's really no plans for that, other than to try and put it on the historic register. So right, it, it'll, it'll remain there. It. That bridge is is. Uh, uh, identified by IDOT as a historic bridge. Oh, okay, good. And they maintain that bridge. They will come out and make sure that it's uh, it's stable because horses will still use it as an equestrian trail. It's not dangerous to anybody who's hiking or biking. Okay, good. So Thank they you. do they do go out there. I've got all the statistics on, you know, the, some of the things that they've done. I haven't had to do anything. It's not necessary. Oh, okay, good. Well, thank you. All right, thank you. Yes. To my cameraman in the back, did you need me to do something? No, no okay, we're okay. You can mention Channel 6 again. All right, yeah, cha <laughs> Channel <laughs> 6, yeah. Come. The, um, the 60th anniversary video is airing that we've updated uh, latest. Uh, oh, so that would be nice. If you go on to Channel 6, um, you'll be able to see that celebration that was over at Sears. Not on Sears. Oh. Oh, about the history. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I I was think I was a part of that. So our question. Well, not really a question, but I looked it up on, on Wikipedia. Hoffman Estates is twenty one square miles, and Schaumburg is nineteen forty. So. So we are bigger. You have more square miles. On yes, Hoffman and State. actually, according to the police department, and they they patrol all of the village, uh, we are now twenty two point three miles. Yeah, they're not always updated. I'm right, so, so that's... Pop, so it's a, it's a little bigger. I mean, Schaumburg is more hemmed in, so... Yeah, right. So they can't they, grow, really. They didn't spread out like we did. So now, do you understand these boundaries? Does it make more sense to you why we are where we are and some of the reasoning behind it? So I guess we can't, we can't annex Inverness or South Barrington or Elgin. So like the mayor said, I think we've probably uh, finished our... Uh, expanding out west and up and up north. Thank you very much for coming. I really appreciate it. 